material set up, then you have to test it, then you gotta make sure all your math is right, and like maybe it doesn't work. But the idea is that you, once you have a computer, you can just make anything you want out of it. Like you can just take it and you can make it. If you put it online, everyone in the world can see it. So you have a really good idea, you wanna distribute it, it's there. Um, there's a student here, Frost, who hopefully will be at Friday Foursquare to meet him, because this guy's awesome. Uh, I don't know if you heard about YouTube Instant, but he was the guy who made that. So the, the, the idea was that his roommate bet him Hey, I, can't, I bet you can't make this uh, website that lets you like search Google or YouTube videos instantly in like under an hour. And he's like, okay, you're on. Took him three hours to do it, and like by the time he woke up the next, I'm not kidding. Like overnight, he had requests from like 20 interviewers from different newspapers wanting to catch the story. He um, got an he got an offer from YouTube on Twitter. Yeah, he got a he got a job offer. He, he was 19. I think now he's 20, but he got an offer from the CEO of YouTube overnight. Like Aww. that's pretty cool. I saw him in the vlog. He's showing it off. Oh, really? Oh, uh, he's showing off YouTube Instant? Yeah. yeah. He also, uh, he just finished work on this thing, Instant FM. Or he's ah, it's so it, cool. Like sharing playlists. It, it, it's kind of, the idea is like you can make a playlist uh, and it like, just goes to YouTube and finds all the songs you want. So like if you're looking for like, you know, mostly good music, you can just like make a playlist, send it for free. There's no, it, it's totally free. I don't think there's any ads on the site. I don't think they're planning to make any money. It was mostly like, hey, I just wanted to go put this together. So I did. Like that's the sort of stuff you can do. Um, there are people here who like just say, hey, I want to go work on robots, and we're like, okay, go work on robots. Like, you want to go teach a robot how to work it, use an elevator, open doors, like pick up staplers, bring them to you, make you coffee, you can do it. And the whole idea behind this is it's, it's the same family of techniques. It's like this one, there's like this core body of knowledge that kind of looks like this. And I'm going to put a smiley face in it because this is really happy stuff. And this is just really, really great. And the idea is that once you learn this core body of knowledge, just like how to think in a way that lets you program something, how to think about how to think in a way that's amenable to how the machine works, then if you want to go and take it off in some direction, you can say, I'm just going to go learn like that little thing right here, or maybe that little thing right there. And, and the idea is that there's all these little, uh, like once you have this core body of knowledge, it's just branch off in whatever direction you want and make the computer do something for you. So if you want to go and make the next big discovery in biology, Take this. Uh, take what you learn out of like the core CS and like go to the biology department and be like, we want to do gene sequencing. We have these really good algorithms for like lining up DNA and see if we can find the causes of these certain diseases. We can actually find the genes that cause these things to happen. And the idea is that you couldn't do this by hand. There's too many. You know, try try writing out the human genome. Get back to me when you're done. Uh, or have the computer do it. And it's like, okay, I did that like five times. Over. And the whole point of it is just once you have this core body of knowledge, if you want to go and start doing some kind of genome sequencing and find out like how to cure cancer, that's what you can do with this. If you want to go into robotics and you want to tr uh, train things to like, you know, drive, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the videos of the Stanford Autonomous Vehicle, the one that was like driving around by itself. Oh, we just saw it twice. Yeah, it's awesome. They, I don't know if you, there's these videos where they taught it to parallel park, and I, I don't really know how to describe it. Did you see this? No, that's oh, that, I, I can't. I'm pretty sure I have. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's the thing. Not only can you not parallel park, you can't parallel park the way this thing parallel parks. So what they do is they set up these cars. And actually, that's too big. That makes it look too easy. So they set up these cars, and they want the car to go here. So they take the car, speed it at 30 miles an hour, just like gun <sighs> the accelerator, slam the brakes on, and the thing swings around and just like fits in between the two of them. And they can do this repeatedly. Like you can watch the video of them like parallel parking this car. They can have this thing like driving at 120 miles an hour in circles. And like no human can react as fast as you need to do that. But they can do that because all they did was they took these techniques from robotics and core CS ideas. They borrowed stuff from artificial intelligence, reinforcement learning. Like some of the people who like really are f like fun doing fundamental research into what you can do with AI, they're like right down the hallway. In fact, if you haven't seen the AI, AI lab, we should go there after. They can just point out, like, yeah, here's all the random stuff. Like, the person who works behind this door has MacArthur Genius Grant and, like, invented modern AI. Like, um, the guy who's, like, developing Google's, like, autonomous car yeah, they're all, is they're, they're a right, lecturer they're here. Right on the hall, and they're all actually really nice people, which is amazing. You just knock on their door and talk to them. So, um, there's that. Um, if you like the movie Avatar, or if you like at least the visuals of the movie Avatar, <laughs> I'll separate the two out because they are actually different concerns, um, then you can go to graphics, and you can say, well, we've got this really amazing device that can crunch numbers at this blinding speed, and it can do these very clever matrix operations. How do we make something aesthetically pretty, and how do we model the real world? Because if you think about how the computer works, I mean, the computer, what makes